few years ago, I had the opportunity to go skydiving in Switzerland over the Swiss Alps, an opportunity I enthusiastically pursued. When I arrived at the uh, skydiving center, after a very brief lesson, I went into the plane, and fears touched every part of me. I said, self, what are you doing? <laughs> However, in this very small plane, as soon as we took off, the fears went away. Adrenaline replaced the fears. I was excited. I couldn't believe I was about to do this. Then, the small door opened that I would voluntarily fall out of. Enter again the fears. Now, since it was my first time skydiving, I was attached to a professional. I had to do nothing. And so he said, are you ready? And I said, no, but it was in my, my choice, and he fell out, and there we go. The irony, though, is this, that once we started falling, I wasn't afraid anymore. I couldn't be. The situation was literally out of my hands, and I wasn't afraid because I was trusting this professional in whose life and whose hands were my life. He knew what he was doing. All I had to do was let him do it. Here's the irony. Why do I question the Lord? Is he not the way, the truth, and the life? Is he not the creator of the universe who cares for me? Why am I afraid he's going to drop me? Today's gospel and passage sheds light on this unfortunate dilemma. When the Lord reveals himself, I, often like the disciples in the gospel, am, quote, startled and terrified because I think I'm seeing a ghost. What is it about a ghost that's scary, though? Well, it seems to me it's scary precisely because it's invasive and mysterious. I'm not afraid of some ghost haunting an uninhabited house miles away. I'm afraid of the ghost that is mysterious and invading my personal space. It's scary when this unknown presence enters my reality, my private existence, which, by the way, I have taped up with private property signs and do not enter signs. My private existential shell is not open. What happens, though, when it's Jesus? And is this not the case, right? Jesus, our Lord, enters into our life and yet his often unexpected and ominous and mysterious entrance, which is not foreseen or welcome, causes me to tremble. So what to do, brothers and sisters? What can we do so that the Lord's presence does not cause us to tremble? I think two ways. One, sell the existential private property. Two, enter into the experience. First, sell the property. What do I mean? It's a myth. My life, that's a myth. It's basically an oxymoron. It's not my life. I am not self-sufficient. In fact, I'm radically contingent. I am poor through and through. Poverty characterizes our conditions as human beings. I'm created, not uncreated. I'm dependent, not independent. This poverty motif is manifested thoroughly in the life of Jesus, is it not? He came from the Father to return to the Father, to do the Father's will. His whole being is being sent by the Father. Balthazar says that, read from the model of Christ, therefore, vocation is the expropriation of a private existence. Christ teaches this. The saints reinforce this that our life is about unconditional and unrestricted readiness to be used by God. Christ's yes to the Father is also revelatory of this readiness. He allows himself to be sent. He is always welcoming to the Father's will. In turn, then, when the Lord enters my life, when he reaches out to me, Brothers and sisters, let us not be afraid, but say with Jesus, yes. For our life is most authentically lived 
when it is expropriated, when it is used by God, when it is not a private solace, but more when it is like a flower that is blossoming and opening up. Second, enter into the experience. In today's gospel, Jesus says to the frightened disciples, look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. When Jesus enters into our life, he invites us to enter more deeply into his. When ghosts, whatever they might be, infringe upon our existence, take this opportunity to face the fear directly. Touch it, see it, look at it, enter into it. Do not run away, but enter into the experience before you, because brothers and sisters, as our holy doctor Bonaventure says, in every creature God speaks. We have nothing to be afraid of. Every detail of our lives is consecrated by God, is a verbal expression of the Word Himself. So Bonaventure says, open your eyes, alert your ears, unlock your lips, and apply your heart so that in all creation you may see, hear, praise, love and adore, magnify and honor your God. Brothers and sisters, there are no ghosts. One final thought. In his letter to the Order, St. Francis of Assisi, speaking to the brothers about the Eucharist, exhorts, Hold back nothing of yourselves for yourselves, that he who offers himself totally to you may receive you totally. This is getting rid of your private property. This is entering into the experience. Jesus says, look at my hands and my feet. Touch me and see. He is always offering himself to us and continues to do so in an exemplary way through the Holy Eucharist, which itself is an exemplary expression of the sacramental presence of God in all of creation. So brothers and sisters, every detail of our life is used by God. We have nothing to be afraid of. There are no ghosts. So may this Eucharistic posture of St. Francis become our own. And when the details of our life cause us to tremble and scare us, take faith. Hold back nothing of yourself. Sell the private property. Enter into the experience. Look for the wounds of Christ. Feel for him. Know that your life rests securely in his hands. And though the leap is frightening, he knows when to pull the parachute. All you have to do is let him. Listen to him who says, it is I. Hold back nothing of yourselves for yourselves, that he who offers himself totally to you may receive you totally.